your feet You're the only one I need I turn to you and you are always there In troubled times it's you I see I put you first, that's all I need I humble all I am, all to you One way, Jesus You're the only one that I could live for One way, Jesus You're the only one that I could live for You're the only one, you're the only one you're the only one that I could live for You're the only one You're the only one You're the only one that I could live for You were always, always there Every how and everywhere The grace of God so deeply within me You will never, ever change Yesterday, today
I'm Cameron, and we're stoked to be with you for Church at Home today. We have an awesome service for you guys. We are starting a new series about what it means to be made in God's image. We can treat other people as God's masterpiece by treating them fairly, taking care of them, having empathy, showing humility, and standing up for what is right. We're going to look at some Bible stories that show us what it means to show love to other people like God did. Like Cameron said, because we were created by God, we can become more like God in the things we do, think, and say. It's going to be great. But first, let's get up, come on, on your feet, and sing our memory verse song. This is Ephesians 2.10. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things he planned for us long ago. Let's go. masterpiece he has created us anew in christ jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago for we are god's masterpiece he has created us anew in christ jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago That was great, guys. God created us to go out and do good things. Wow, I'm excited to learn more about what that means and how all of us, even you, Cameron, were created in God's image. Let's check out today's Bible story about Adam and Eve, the very first people God created ever. Let's check it out. Stories of the Bible, Adam and Eve. God made the whole world and everything in it. He made the sun and the stars in the sky. He made the fish in the sea and the animals that walk on land. He made every tree and flower. God also made man. Hurry! God said, let us make man to be like us. They will reign over all the animals and fish of the world. So God created man and woman. Hi! Oh, hi! The first man was named Adam. That's me! and the first woman was called Eve. That's me! Then God blessed them and gave Adam and Eve jobs to do. Let's do this! They were supposed to take care of all the animals that God had created, like the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Adam and Eve were also supposed to have children to fill the earth with more people. Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. God had a really good plan for the world when he created Adam and Eve. He created them in his image so they can go out in the world and show his love everywhere. They show God's love by caring for his creation, and he created us to do the same thing. He created humans to care for everything he created, including other people. That's right. Loving other people and doing what is right is how we can care for God's creation. We can read stories of Jesus in the Bible to learn more about how to love other people. We're actually going to learn more about that right now. Let's check out this episode of Greg's newest show, Screen Hunters, where he and cameraman Dan use green screen technology to unlock a world of potential. Let's check it out. What's up to all my internet friends? My name is Greg, and this is Screen Hunters. Through the power of green screen technology, cameraman Dan and I are unlocking a world of potential as we search for truth. (laughs) 
What's up guys and welcome to our newest series. Now, traveling is a little limited right now, but sometimes an obstacle is an opportunity. Now, with the help of this brand new green screen, we're gonna make a series that's unlike any of our past adventures. No more driving out to the desert, no more flying across the world. Everything is taken care of right here. Our green screen creates new possibilities, letting us go places and see things we never could have otherwise. I'll show you how it works. Bam! Look at that! Just like that, we're on a sandy beach in Hawaii. Woo! And it is hot, let me tell you. It's a hot one out here. But we gotta switch it up now. Whoa! Wow! Just like that, we're in the Arctic tundra of Siberia. And it is negative 32 degrees. Woo! And look at that! A family of penguins. Beautiful little birds. I've always wanted to see these guys up close. Let's switch it up. Oh, oh, we're at Subway. Wow, we're back in California at a good old fashioned Subway. I'm gonna go grab a sandwich. Let's go, Dan. That was a good $5 foot long. Woo, tasty sandwich. Good call, Dan. Now, because there's a clear difference between me and the screen behind me, I can be put in front of just about anything. If I was wearing green, it would be a different story. You wouldn't be able to see any of my body parts. Wait, that gives me an idea. By dressing up in this state-of-the-art green suit, only my head will show up on the screen. Now, I can be anyone I want. Wow, this is amazing. I, I don't even need to work out. I don't need to buy new clothes. I don't even really need to go anywhere. I mean, I can do anything thanks to this suit. Dan, how do I look? You look like you're wearing a green unitard. Uh, I guess I am. This thing is pretty tight. I think I'm gonna get out of the green suit, Dan. That was a lot of fun. But hey, as fun as it is to play around in the virtual world, we were created for so much more than that. Now, I can pretend that I'm someone else as much as I want, but that doesn't change the truth of who I really am. I'm Greg. I mean, I was made in the image of God, and so are each and every one of you. Now, being made in God's image means that we're like Him. When God made us, He made us so we can think, feel, and create just like Him. Now, it's been that way from the very beginning. Adam and Eve were made in God's image and God put them in charge of caring for his creation. God wants us to care for his creation too, which includes caring for other people. Now, because we're made in the image of God, we can relate to each other and care for all of God's creation in ways that the rest of creation can. Therefore, we can become more like God by loving and caring for all of creation. Now, sometimes we can forget this, but you wanna know the best way to remember? You're doing it already. Going to church, reading the Bible, and praying are all great ways to keep us grounded in the identity that God has given us. So, let's love each other the way God loves us and keep watching Screen Hunters in the weeks ahead for more digital adventures. And I'll see you guys soon. Dan, let's head off to Turkey. Dan, the country of Turkey, not a farm of turkeys. Dan, you know, turkeys scare me, Dan. Greg, thanks, man, that was awesome. That makes me wanna go spend some time with God so I can learn more about Him and become more like Him. I don't know, man, you got a lot of work to do. I know, I know, I'll never be perfect or the same as God, but I can always try to be more like him, right? That's right. Hey, watching Craig in the studio gives me an idea. Game time! Welcome guys to game time where we bring the game right to you. This yeah. first game is called Spot the difference. Tabor, tell them what we're doing. All right, what we're gonna have is two pictures pop up right behind us. You have to name five items that are different from each picture. Awesome, and you're gonna have 30 seconds to find all five differences. So I'm gonna pull out my trusty phone, and let's get going, okay? Three, two, one, go! Oh, wow! Oh, oh. Exactly the same! How are we gonna do this? Okay, okay wait, no, I, see I, see yep. I see a difference, I see a difference. Yeah, I see I'm not gonna say it. No, tell me. You guys, when you see it, Call it out to your family. So here we go. Okay. Wow. Awesome. All right. We're yeah. No. 15 seconds left. 15 seconds 15. left. 15. Okay. Yep. No, this is hard. I, see three I don't know how to. I see three. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling yeah, you. Yeah. Don't 10 tell me. Seconds left. I'm utterly lost. I don't uh, know where to even go from now. Yeah. This you're is... lost. Okay. Here yeah. we go. Three, 
two, one. Wow. Time stop oh, guessing. Time it. guessing. Okay, okay, let's pull up the screen to see what was different. Boom. Awesome. Whoa! There you have it. Man, I that was like a magic that. trick. I just yeah. kind of shot it out there. That was awesome. All right, let's go to the next picture. We just rearranged some more things on a different screen. Let's pull it up. You know the rules. And three, two, one, boom! There it is! Whoa! 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 Okay, Whoa! same thing. Okay, wow! Well, no, I see it on that side on the picture, but I'm not telling you. Okay, Do you yeah. guys see it? Call it out! Right, Don't forget to call it out! In, ten seconds in. Woo! Uh, ten seconds in. Okay, not left. I'm, That's good. I'm uh, still confused. No, no yeah. I see a difference! I see it! Wow! I can't wow. believe it. Wow. Ten seconds left! Ten seconds I'm left! I'm seeing things like a machine gun. I just. I got it. I got okay, it. Okay, three, wow. two, one. Whoa, I, don't have five. Yes. Yes. Stop uh, I didn't Stop get five. Guessing. I don't know about you guys. All right, let's see what's different on the next screen. In three, two, one, boom. There it is. Oh my gosh. Oh, yep. the cookie the whole got time. Got the I lemon, got the cu the yeah, other I stuff. There I it is. Cookies. You got cookies. Got cookies. Okay. All right, okay. let's go to the next slide. Awesome. We're going to see what's different in a whole different picture. In three, two, one, boom. boom. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Start whoa. time, start time. Whoa. Okay. Whoa, All right. whoa, whoa. Uh, Okay, no. I, yeah, this no. Is, yeah, this is it. really hard. Okay. This is harder than all the rest of the pictures. I don't uh, even know. No, I see a difference. I see oh, one. What? Oh, You're my so God. Hard. I didn't even see it. I'm not going to tell you. 15 seconds okay, left. Okay, wow. 15 seconds left. Yeah. No. Oh, I just got three in one time. That's oh, amazing. Sure. Hey, hey, hey. Really? <laughs> really? Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I just five got seconds it. left. Wow. Three. No, I don't have the two, rest of the two. One. No. Time. 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 All right. Okay. You know the drill. Let's pull up the screen. Three, two, one. Boom! Oh my gosh! Like a magic. Just, I threw it out there again. Wow. Okay. Wow, look at I those M&Ms. Man, That's I'm wild. not good at this game. All, All right, right, let's get to the next picture. All right, next round, next round. You guys ready? Okay, get your eyes balls ready. Here we go. Three, two, one, go! 30 seconds, 30 go. seconds, go! Yeah. Whoa! Okay, okay. these this pictures the hard get one. harder and harder. I don't even know how you do it. Hope you guys could do it. You're, you're extremely smart. That's awesome. Okay, All right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, you got uh, nope, 12 seconds nope. in. I, I've got zero. We have to work 12 seconds I already in. Have, I, got zero. I have more than five. I have what? more than five. What? More than <laughs> five? I'm just <laughs> kidding. Ten seconds left. What? Ten seconds Whoa. left. Okay. Right. Uh, wow. Uh, oh, I got one. There what? it is. Really? Yeah. Yep. Here we go. No, Three. I got one. Two. No, I can't get one. one. Time. Uh, there we go. That's it. All right. Let's All right. see what's different. Boom. There it is. Okay. Yep. No red and blue okay, and then green and then. Not green, whatever it is. All right, guys, that closes up for game time for Spot the Difference. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> game time, game all time. the time. Game time. Oh, yeah. Game now time. do the game. game. Now game do the game. Well, guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. It was so fun to learn about how God created all of us in his image. He wants us to go out and show love to his people and creation. We're going to talk more about what that means in the coming weeks, so make sure you come back next week. And parents, in the meantime, make sure you check out SaddlebackKids.com for activity sheets, coloring pages, and even questions to talk over with your kids. We love you guys. Love you. We'll see you back here next week. Bye. Bye. church trust that you guys had a good time with the kitties and danced and jiggled a bit in the privacy of your own homes we pray that you may just enjoy this time together with us and stand up and let's worship God together Let's worship together. Amen. Amen. Amen.
to have a father like you, to be seen, to be known, and to be loved by you, Lord. It's amazing. Your love is amazing. It is steady. It is unchanging. You are so, so good to us, oh God. We are happy that we are seen by you. We are happy that we are known by you and that we are loved by you, dear God. We thank you for your love. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your faithfulness to the cross. Mm. Mm. We thank you for your undying love. Mm.
to you, pubs. Good morning, good morning, people of following Jesus. Sanbonani, Dumelang, Machiloni Abu, and Huyemore, Almal, at home. Um, it's so awesome to be back on this platform. Dale and the team, thank you, thank you so much for leading us so well with that worship. You know, there's something strange about this worship. It is recorded, right? And we've played it over and over, over a period of time. But somehow, I still find a way, I don't know how, but I guess it's the Holy Spirit. I still find the, the worship fresh, and I still connect with it in an amazing way. I hope you at home are doing the same, because for me, I can't get used to this worship. It doesn't matter how many times we, re we repeat it, but somehow God just makes it fresh and fresh and fresh. So worship team... Thank you so much for saving us so well and so diligently with your talent. We appreciate you. Listen, Children's Church as well, parents, thank you for putting your kids in front of the screen. And we hope that they're enjoying what the Children's Church teachers, uh, Megan and Fifi, are putting together for them. Because you see, there's a lot of work happening in the background. And we'll appreciate if parents, you can continue um, making sure that your kids show up and your kids participate because we are not just putting this as an add-on. We are still believing that the children are being uh, discipled by God and by Megan and Fifi and all of us in this time to set good, strong foundations. So we are thankful for the worship team. We are thankful for the children's church. Listen, if you are also joining us for the first time, on this platform and you are visiting us we want to give you a warm 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 
warm welcome and we want to say we see you saubona and please make yourself at home and hey also if you have if you've been part of this church for a long time and you you are a member in this community now we say to you welcome on this place and on this platform um I just have quick announcements to make for us before we jump into what we're doing for the day. And it's actually not announcements, but more like reminders. The first one is our bring and share that's happening on the 26th of September. This is going to be Heritage uh, Day celebration. So we know that for some people, their heritage outfits are just as I'm dressed today. For some people, we have some regalia that we can proudly um, wear and show up with that can reveal part of who we are and part of our heritage. So come dressed up in whatever regalia that represents the ethnicity and the heritage that you be belong to and let us have an amazing, amazing celebration on that day. And remember also on that day, we are bringing something to the table be it a salad or be it cookies or be it a drink, just bring whatever you can so that on that day we can share a meal together as a community. Very important to note, to, to note, if you cannot bring anything, do not stay at home because you can't. After church, if you can't bring anything, do not leave because you didn't bring anything. Remember, we are one community and we need to share stuff together. Another important reminder is that we are starting new home groups in this month of September. One is going to be in Ren Park Ridge and one is going to be in Cosmo City. In fact, yesterday, people of Cosmo City gathered together for a braai to pave the way forward in how they see fit to do life together. It was an amazing time of fellowship and an amazing time of enjoying a meal together as a community. I'm excited for this community. I'm excited for these new home groups that are starting because it means people will be connecting together and people will be fellowshipping together. And I'm excited because this is happening at the right time as well, where we'll be starting a new series in the book of Ephesians, where we'll be talking about some of these aspects of staying grounded in our faith and together as a community. The last reminder that I have for all of us is that we've released new dates for how we will be gathering going forward. We released them last week. We put them on the WhatsApp group as well. And we hope that you at home, you receive them and you've put them together and you know when we are meeting because today we are online, but next week we are back face to face. So please check those dates because that's how we'll be gathering going forward. Those are the remainder announcements that I have for all of us today. And stay tuned because I'll be back for more with the preach. Hey, I'm back and I'm back with more excitement because today we are starting the new series in the book of Ephesians. Finally, it is happening. In case you are joining us and you don't have the context of the book of Ephesians and the community of following Jesus, in 2020, from February or from March, no, the second week of March of 2020, we began a new series in the book of Ephesians. But then, like everybody around the world, we did not know that COVID was going to disrupt our lives. So after the second week of doing this series, we had to stop it because COVID had already disrupted our lives. And it's almost two years now. And as the OT, we felt its fit for us to bring back this series because they, we felt there was a message that God had prepared for us. And we felt this, um, this book of Ephesians um, had some learnings and some, some ways in which we, we felt as the OT we needed to continue building and edifying one another. So today we are kicking off that series again, and I'm going to do the overview of the series. And next week we'll be starting with our part one. So today you'll see it's just an overview of the series. And for those who are part of the WhatsApp group, you'll also see 
that we have put a link with the video um, from the Bible Project that gives the overview as well. I'm going to touch on other extra points, but the video that I've sent on the group also explains um, some foundations and some broader explanations about the series and this book of Ephesians. Like we've said last week, during your quiet time, if you can make it a point that you go through this book, you study this book for yourself, so that when we come together, at least you would have some grounding, you would have some basics that you've learned, and whatever that we are doing together, you'll just be bringing um, your own understanding and your own um, readings and revelation that God has given you through your own time of reading. So these are just uh, quick facts about um, the book of Ephesians and the city of Ephesus that we will be talking about over the next coming weeks. So Ephesus was a capital city of a Roman province in Asia Minor. And this capital city was booming economically. And it was thriving and it was busy, just like the city of Jobek that we find ourselves in today. We know that despite the tough economic times, the city of Jovek is vibrant, is busy, and is the economic hub. If we have to claim of the entire African continent, we know that Jovek, especially Sentin, um, generates some crazy amounts of money in a month or over whatever period, um, more than other cities around um, Africa. We know there are cities that are starting to come through and that are starting to compete with Jobek. But in any case, Ephesus during its time was a capital city that in Asia Minor that was booming in economy. And it was actually a significant center of trade because it was also located next to the harbor um, in the Western Asia Minor. And, and you know, the city had major, major roads that were connecting different cities towards Asia Minor. And over time, the harbor that used to bring in different ships and different trades into the capital, what we've learned about it is that a lot of salt gathered underwater where the ships were coming. And big ships could no longer get to the harbor because there was lots of uh, salt that was developing underneath. And therefore, trade started being disturbed. And slowly, we saw the traffic dying down of the boats that used to go do trade in the city. And therefore, economically, things started dying down and the city started being um, um, not as economically vibrant as it used to be. We know that um, today, Ephesus is located in the present day Turkey. Um, today, if you go to Turkey, we are told some of the monuments that were there over these times are still there. And Ephesus also, was known in the, its own day, um, was famous for the temple of Artemisis. What? Yeah, At Artemisis. And this temple was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Listen, they say this temple was 130 meters long. It was 67 meters wide. And the pillars, the 127 pillars that were used just for the roof, were 18 meters high. So this was an impressive temple, and we understand that from this temple of Artemis, craftsmen used to come sell shrines and household images of the goddess that the worshippers could take home in their long journeys. And we know that the efficient people were proud of their religious heritage. And you can read about this from Acts chapter 19, verse 35. We know that it's not a disputed fact that the book of Ephesians was written by the Apostle Paul. Who was Apostle Paul? Many of us know the Apostle Paul, um, who used to be Saul. And Saul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was persecuting the church. Paul was the man of the law until Jesus met him on the road to Damascus and literally closed his eyes for three days, if I'm not mistaken. And by the time Jesus opened his eyes, it was not just his physical eyes that were opened. 
but his spiritual eyes were awakened and he too could see the real Jesus that he presented to himself. And we know that Jesus changed Paul's heart and Jesus gave Paul an assignment after he said, why are you persecuting me? Once Paul had received redemption, he turned from his old ways and became one of the champions of the gospel. And we know that Paul has written many books in the New Testament. He's in fact one of the, uh, the fathers of the foundations of our gospel. And Jesus forgives Paul and ushers him in to ministry. And Paul, we are told, in fact, spent close to three years in Ephesus. One of his longest mission trips was in Ephesus. So when Paul writes this letter to the Ephesians, he writes this letter to people close to his heart because he went to found this church. He went and developed a, a, a community of people in a hostile environment. You can read about the story of Paul and how he found himself in Ephesus in the book of Acts chapter 19. And there you can find um, his story. So as I've said, everybody wanted to be in this city of Ephesus. It was vibrant. There was economic boom there. And like Josie, everyone just wanted to be here because there were economic opportunities. And it was the place to be. But Paul, because of that, saw an opportunity to go to Ephesus because he saw an evangelistic opportunity to go preach the gospel in that city. You know, in Jobek, the fertile, the ground is fertile. There are people from all walks of, walks of life. There are people from different backgrounds and different ethnicities, different languages. The ground is fertile in Jobek for us to go out and share the gospel. And Paul saw the same opportunity and went to Ephesus. We understand that the Greeks and the Jews were living side by side in Ephesus. And God, because the Jews were the chosen people of God, Paul gets sent into that environment to go break the division that the Jews and the Gentiles were finding themselves in. The Jews and the Greeks at the time that they were living separate lives and through the empowerment of the gospel, Paul tells them the truth about the unity that they can find in Christ. So this city was full of diverse people and, and Paul writes to them because he saw an opportunity to go speak and declare the gospel of Jesus Christ, the salvation through the forgiveness of, Je of, of, of sins through Jesus Christ. So the people of Ephesus had a special place in Paul's heart. Paul writes this letter from prison. You'll remember that Paul was arrested in Jerusalem and was transported to Rome. And in Rome, he was in what it's called house arrest. And it was in this place where he could write letters, where he could be, receive some visitors. And Paul, in this place, hears how the efficient people were doing and writes a letter to encourage them. And he writes this letter and gives it to one of his spiritual sons called Ty Tychiras. I don't know if I spelled that correctly, but yeah. Tychiras goes with this letter to the people of Ephesians. Why was Paul writing to the Ephesian people? He was writing to remind them of their identity. You'll remember that in the city of Ephesus, there were idol worshipping that was happening. There were other religions that were happening that were taking place there. And Paul writes to remind the people of Ephesus about their identity in Christ. He reminds them about this gift of salvation that they have received through Christ who forgave their sins. And he writes to them and says, hey, I want to encourage you. I want to commend you for staying and believing and not being moved by, by all these things that are happening around you. I want to commend you for that. So Paul writes to them to encourage them. And Paul writes to them to equip them and to, to just remind them of this truth and says, remember, I want you to solidify your belief. Do not listen to these outside voices. You've been doing so well, but do not 
forget the truth. And he charges them. He charges them. And in fact, you'll see that this book of Ephesians is divided into three parts. And the first part is a call for us, meaning the invitation and the identity that we receive from God. And as he writes to the Ephesians, this is a reflection for us as well. What is our call? What is our call into this um, kingdom of God? And Paul writes and speaks about this call for us because chapter 1 to chapter 3 speaks about the foundations of our faith, the calling that we've received through Christ into this faith. And we also see that from chapter 4 going to chapter 6, but not the full chapter 6, we see that the second thing is the conduct for us, those who believe, those who've been chosen by Christ, those who've been adopted into his kingdom. Once we've been solidified by this a truth of the salvation and truth of the foundation of the salvation from Christ, then Paul says, now that you know your identity, this is how you ought to conduct yourself. This is how the Holy Spirit should be encouraging you to behave going forward. And then the last thing that we see, Paul encourages the, the believers in Ephesus, is how to fight the conflict how to fight the conflict, because in chapter 6, we read about the armor of God, how to strengthen ourselves from the attacks that we receive. Because the people of Ephesus, though they were still steadfast in their faith and in how they love one another, we know that the environment that they were existing in was a very hostile environment. So Paul writes to them and he encourages them and he says, hey, remember, remember this gospel. Of Jesus Christ and I know you've been holding fast to it do not lose hope and he sends them this encouragement and reminder and say I see that you've been faithful and do not lose this line that you are on we see Paul writing to people that he knows to people that he hasn't seen for years but we know that Paul laid a good foundation in this church in Ephesus. Some of the biblical foundations and significant things happened in Ephesus that we read about in other chapters of the Bible. And I'm not going to mention all of them, but few of some of the um, significant things that had happened in Ephesus included um, um, once people in Ephesus had received the gospel of Jesus Christ through the salvation and the forgiveness of sins, we know that many believers who had practiced magic arts and who were worshipping other idols, we read in Acts chapter 19 that these people actually brought all their books that they used to use and they banned them in front of everyone as their declaration for their commitment to the faith. And we are told that the total value of these books that were destroyed were about the, the, the value of it in terms of the worth were, was about 50,000 silver pieces. I don't know how much that is today, but it sounds like a lot of money. So once people had received this message and they, were, they received this foundation of Christ and salvation through the forgiveness of sins through Christ, people turned away from their, excuse me, turned away from their idol worship and turned their face towards Christ and therefore banned all things that reminded them that reminded them of their past. We read in Acts chapter 18 a story about Priscilla and Aquila um, who discipled Apollos but who also played a significant role once they've had the gospel in discipling others in their community. We know that in this church of Ephesus, Timothy, who was the spiritual son of Paul, had his first pastoral role in Ephesus because Paul sent him after he planted the church and said, Timothy, you stay here and you continue leading this church. So a few significant things happened in this, um, in this city of Ephesus. As I said, I'm not going to mention all of them, but those are few that I wanted to bring to your attention. And you can go and read in different parts of the Bible some of the significant activities that happened in Ephesus. I mean, there's another thing that actually um, was a big attraction in Ephesus, and it was their amphitheater. We are told that they had this big amphitheater that used to sit 
close to 50,000 people where they used to hold all these events. And we are also told that today in Turkey, when you go visit, you can still see the ruins of this amphitheater. But something also significant happened um, in this, in this um, um, uh, the church in Ephesus. Something that I consider um, big happened in this city and in this church in Ephesus because it was not just Paul who wrote to this church. It was not just Paul who held these people, this church in Ephesus close to their heart. Jesus himself, through the Apostle John, writes in the book of Revelation chapter 2 to this church. And I want to actually mention some of the things that he says because Jesus writes to them himself and says, hey, I want to praise you. Like Paul was praising them. He says, I want to praise you because you've been steadfast in this faith of yours. He says to them, Jesus, when he speaks to them in the book of Ephesians, I mean, in the book of Revelations, he says, hey, I've heard of your faith and listen, you are doing a great job. But Jesus turns and says, I have just one complaint against you. Just one complaint against you. You have lost your first love. You have lost your passion towards me. Yes, you've rejected all of these negative things that are happening. Yes, you've stood fast to your faith. Yes, you are loving one another. But it looks like those things, you are doing them as a duty and not out of a passion that you used to carry when you first fell in love with me. Ooh, I can't wait until we dig in more into this. I can't wait until we dig in more into this because you see, this church of Ephesus resembles a lot of us today believers. We still love Jesus. We still committed to Jesus. But the question is, have we lost our first love? Have we lost that passion? Are we on a routine just attending church or doing business for God, but not business with God? I can't wait for us as a church to dig in into this. Because you see, Jesus is challenging the church in Ephesus and says, you are my servant. It's easy for you to get caught up in the busyness of life, the busyness of ministry. But what I'm interested in is that passion that you used to have for me, is that first love that you used to have for me. So Jesus, as we see using the Apostle Paul through a vision, also writes to this church and say, hey, you carry a special place in my heart. You carry a special place in my heart. So come back and repent because I have not many complaints against you. Just one. And that's the deal breaker for me because I don't want you to lose the passion that you used to have for me. It's going to be exciting in this series. It's going to be exciting in this series exploring all these different dynamics because you see the church of Ephesus was actually also a complicated diverse group of people who came into one space and tried to live this life of faith together. And us as a community of following Jesus, I see so many resemblances. I see so many unique things that we identify with, with this church. And I'm, that's what makes me excited about this series. I'm hoping you're excited too. Because it is in this series where we're going to be drilling down some of our priorities. It is in this series where we're going to focus on especially our priority of equipping. Because we are going to equip one another as we go through this series. We've started already with inductive Bible study. And we're going to use that method a lot as we look at this book of Ephesians. Just as a reminder, we will be holding inductive Bible study sessions for some who wants, um, who are not part of it the first time, but also for some who want to continue on this journey of exploring and reading and wrestling with scripture together as a community. And in home groups, my prayer and my hope is that we are going to continue wrestling with this book together. So my plea to you all who are part of home groups is that for this series, let's put stuff aside. Let's focus in this book. Let's dig in more 
and let's dig in more as a community and as different home groups so that we can all enrich one another during this time. So we will be focusing on our equipping priority as the main priority that we'll be focusing on. But why do we want to focus on equipping as our priority? I mean, the reasons are endless, but for now I'll give you two. Because we believe that church's role is to equip its people with relevant and practical theology tools that will prepare them for everyday life. We believe that's why we are called here as a people of following Jesus to come and equip one another, to come and be here for one another. You know, this series, um, our tagline for this series is, is going to be the gospel story, the book of Ephesians, the gospel story that sharpens every part of our everyday story. Ah, man, I'm excited about this series. Our prayer is that we are going to equip one another so that we can be relevant, we can have practical theology, and we can get tools that can help us to live our everyday life. The second reason is we want to focus on our equipping um, priority because we know that um, in this time that we're living in, in these uncertain times that we're living in, it's not all of us who know, who understand how to navigate these times. So if we walk alongside each other and equip one another, if we remind ourselves why we are here, if we remind ourselves of our vision and why we exist, we believe that this series is going to be a catalyst in how it's going to shape our way going forward. So my hope and my prayer for all of us is that this is not just going to be any other series. I pray that once we finish with this series, we're going to look back and say, thank you, Lord, for bringing us this far. We're going to look back and say, indeed, this series has sharpened, has, has revealed or has reminded us of where we are going as a church. So come, journey with us. I've mentioned already that we're going to be focusing on the Bible, the, the inductive Bible study through the initiatives of small groups. And we're going to be introducing other small um, initiatives as well during this time, focusing on equipping one another. We'll be taking the themes from Ephesians and equipping one another. Prayer is going to be a big part of this as well. So be ready to be part of Zoom um, prayer groups and be part of, uh, if we can gather gathering of prayer as a community because there's a big theme of prayer in this book of Ephesians. You'll remember that a, a big part of our vision, a big part of our vision is for us to focus first in our inward journey, to look inside of us as Paul was writing to these people of, of, of Ephesus and the church in Ephesus. He was saying to them, hey, I want to remind you of who you are and whose you are. So we want to do the same in this journey to remember the intimacy that we are offered with God. That, in fact, the relationship between God and ourselves should be a priority. The book of Ephesians is going to remind us that, in fact, while it is an amazing opportunity for us to gather as a community, Jesus is desperate for a one-on-one -on -one relationship with all of us. And that responsibility lies in you and lies in me. So we are hoping that this series is going to pave the way and remind, of, remind all of us of the importance of being grounded in Scripture and for all of us to own up to this faith journey as individuals and as a community. And we also hope that we are going to work on our outward journey, inward for ourselves and the outward for us together as a community. And we hope that we're going to work also on our forward journey, which is part of our vision, where we'll be impacting society around us. So home groups, I'm hoping you're excited about this time that you're going to have together as well 
and you are looking forward as well to be digging into the scripture even into this uh, the, the series and um the series and 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 the book of ephesians um so what are we hoping to achieve in this series what are we hoping to achieve my prayer is that we are going to achieve making this space that we call following Jesus to be some kind of a hospital, to be a place where the wounded can come and find healing. I'm hoping and I'm praying that in this season, as the wounded come and find healing, there will be change that happens and all of us, as we get healed, will become the wounded healers to others. I'm hoping that this series will help us to see each other as a family. You see, following Jesus, one of my prayer requests to God, my prayer items in my prayer time with God, is for us to be knitted together as a family. It's for you to find your own family within following Jesus, to find people that you call family in this place. I'm hoping that as you journey with us, there will be a time when you, will be, when you find strong community that you can belong to, people you can do life with, people you can cry with, people you can smile with, people you can celebrate with. Oh, Lord, help us. I pray that at the end of this series, we are going to achieve that. And with us launching more home groups, with us getting people to connect together, I believe this is possible. I pray that this series will help all of us to come in it with open minds so that we can see this place and this space as a school, as a university, where all of us can come with attitudes of learning and not any of us, not even one, including myself, will come with an attitude of I know, but will come with an attitude of I am so willing and open to learn from others and share some of the knowledge that God has given me. It is my prayer that all of us will come into the space with an attitude of learning. And lastly, I pray that when we finish this series, God is going to turn all of us into his army. Into his army that is ready for battle. Into his army that is ready to fight, defend, protect, advance peace in our city, in our community. I pray that God is going to give us the courage to make a decision and say, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'm responding to the call and I'm coming to be part of your army, Lord. And I want to be used by you. I want to be guided by you. I pray that when we finish this series, God would have knitted all of us together as his army. And I can't wait for the battles we're going to be fighting in the future together. I can't wait for the victories that we're going to celebrate together. I can't wait walking side by side with each other that when another soldier gets wounded, we'll be quick to pick them up and take them to the hospital for their wounds to be healed. I can't wait for opportunities where we'll be protecting one another. I can't wait for opportunities where we'll be saving one another. I pray that God can turn all of us into an army. Lord, I pray that you help all of us solidify our faith, solidify our foundation, remind us of whose we are. Oh Lord, I pray that our hearts will be open to learning in this season. I pray that Lord, you'll remind us of the power that we have in you and the power of prayer because you see Lord as an army when we all come together and shout loud with one voice and cry out to you and fight in one voice and stand in one voice together 
I believe, Lord, where there is unity, your blessings flow. So I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus that God is going to do amazing things through us and in us during this season. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is going to be an amazing series for all of us. This is going to be an amazing time of learning, of growing, of being healed, of being edified. So, Lord Jesus, come. Lord Jesus, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Hmm. It's going to be an amazing service. Hey, people of following Jesus, with that foundation, I'm hoping this is helpful for you. We'll see you again soon. And until we see you next week at our face-to-face -face gathering at the building, invite some people and let's come fellowship together. And as always, for those who can come and they feel uncomfortable, we'll still be streaming. Please bear with us because sometimes we encounter problems, but every time we send the link on the group, go click on it because we realize that sometimes there's issues with signal, but we want everybody to be fellowshipping together. So forgive us if there are glitches and bear with us. But until we see each other again, I pray may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all until we meet each other again. Sure, sure.